Sorry, so I had to kind of cut that quickly. So in the name of Jesus, he wants to deal with this. So how we then get caught up in these problems of ancestral worship is due to a lack of knowledge, due to a lack of understanding. It has not been explained to us. We have just been told that this is how it is. So it's become cultural, passed on from generation to generation. Um, people even say there's superstitions. There's this, there's this. And... Um, in so many cases, like you, you've got places like uh, people trying to go back to say that um, I know for sure, again, in the West, if you're an African descendant, you will say, I've got to go back to Africa, to my roots. And you come to Africa and in coming back to Africa, you're coming back to ancestral worship. And I want to actually tell you that ancestral worship is demonic. It is not of the Lord. It, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking a clear word here because it is written as I'm reading it to you. When they say, this is again, um, Isaiah 8, verse 19 to 20. When they say to you, inquire of the mediums and the spirit who chirp and matter, shouldn't, and matter, shouldn't a people inquire of their God? So you are not busy inquiring of the Lord who I am. What is, um, what am I called to be like? What is this? And, and I'm again, I'm speaking to Africans and African descendants in this matter, because what's happened is firstly, um, I'm using the term Africa simply because, you know, we were given the, the Roman people that came down here um, in the historic, uh, they came and they called it Africa, but we weren't called Africa. We were called by our, um, our tribes mostly actually. I would like to tell you that because if you look at the Bible and you look at when they talk about, when they speak of Cushites, yes, there's a lot of judgment the Lord speaks against Cushites, but that is a tribe in Africa. It's tribes in Africa, uh, Cushites, uh, or the nation of Cushites. So for instance, I'm Kosa, right? In, in Africa, in Southern Africa, in South Africa. So I've given you through three um, locations. I'm Kosa in Africa. That means I'm still African, but in southern part of Africa because there's still other Kosas in the southern part of Africa, but then a Kosa in South Africa. And that's the third location. The fourth location, I will then say to you, I'm a Kosa, like um, I'm a Kosa from in this region, in South Africa, right? And then further, then I will give you further uh, our clan names that we uh, will pack down and we'll pack out for you and say, okay, though I'm closer, like speaking to another closer, they'll be like, okay, I hear you. I can hear that you are, but what exactly is your lineage? And then people will unpack clan names and clan names. You will see um, it, 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 it differs in different cultures. I mean, the, the closest I can describe it to and compare it to is when um, the Scottish go by clan names. Do you see what I mean? They're all Scottish, right? Aye. So, but what they do is they will then, to, for you to understand what type, where they're from exactly, they will give you a clan name further, right? It's the same thing. So Kushites is a nation. In the Kushite, it depends what type of Kushite. Serbians is a nation. What type of Serbian are you? Uh, a Shunammite is a nation, but it depends what type of Shunammite are you. Where are you coming from? These people are written about in the scripture. So in the book of songs, you'll hear about the Shunammite woman that um, uh, uh, Solomon is writing to his, 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 his songs, his, his, his letter to. Uh, you will also see it, uh, with the prophets, I was called, um, Elijah and Elisha, where they had to, uh, the Lord sent them to a Shunammite woman. That isn't what now we call an African person, right? Um, so when you see these terms, see that, oh, okay, they're talking about Africa in this situation. So what's happened to us as an African people, we have firstly told ourselves that God is not talking about us when he speaks about these things. He really is. Everything that he still says, we're still doing. You know, guys, when I, when I read, when he complains about what the Kushites and the, and the gods that they worship, and I'm like, but Lord, we're still doing this. When are we going to learn? When are we going to actually wake up and see that these things are not working for us? 
So we need to come to that place of stop saying that, no, it is our way. It is not our way. There's other people also being stubborn about this. It's not just Africa. It's India, you know, uh, it's Southeast Asia, it's Asia itself, it's South America. People have, uh, in Caribbean, you know, the Caribbean, the, in Asia, in, in, in the Haitians as well, that are insisting on keeping uh, that connection of ancestral worship, that ancestral God. It's not good. When you worship Jesus, firstly, first and foremost, it doesn't make you Western or Westernized. Because there's a thing of we must remove ourselves as the fight of I don't want to be invaded by the Western culture. So I want to talk about the different churches. If you read the book of Revelations, uh, the word of God comes upon uh, upon John, who was sitting in this uh, island there. And the book of Revelation was born, was birthed from him, uh, speaking in this, uh, sitting in this island. The, and the Lord spoke to him and said, say this to the churches. So the churches come in different forms. The Lord says, every tongue and every nation shall bow down. It doesn't mean my nation, I've got to change myself just because now I'm Christian, right? I'm change my appearance to look what I think is predominantly how a Christian should look. It's a lie, right? Whether you think a Christian is predominantly Jewish, a Christian is predominantly American, it, it's a lie. We are all created from God. We are all God's children. So in the book of Revelations, John says to the church in Ephesus, to the church in Corinth, it, the church in says he names the different churches. So there's a church in Africa, there's a church in America, to the church in America, to the church in Africa, to the church in Asia, to the church in uh, South America, to the church in Europe. This is how it is. You are, as e e Ephesians says, one body in Christ, not the others above the other. We are all one in Christ. And the Lord says, teach them to be one as we are one. So we are having issues in Africa where we've taught ourselves and um, almost deceived ourselves that being Christian is going away from the African identity. The truth is being Christian is going to bring you back to what you were lost, what had, had, had been taken away from you. You are, you are a human being created by God Almighty. And any, if, are you willing, the question now, what I'm having, with, uh, having to discuss with people is, are you willing to lay down culture and pick up your true identity? Because the truth is Jesus. It's a man, it's a person. It's not the systems of the world. It's not what Europe teaches you. It's not what Asia teaches you. It's not even what we teach ourselves here in Africa, right? The truth is Jesus Christ. It's him. It's his word. It's his instruction. So um, I wanted to also share that it, if you look at the word of God, right? If you go to 1 Samuel, right? Uh, 1 Samuel 28, where Saul consults a medium, right? And then that starts from, let me tell you the verse. It starts from verse 3. So Saul was appointed. He, he was given kingship by God. He sent his prophet Samuel to go to him. And uh, he was anointed. He became king. He disobeyed God. Instead of repenting to the Lord and say, God, I've done evil, whatever the consequences are, I will accept them because truly I have done this evil against you. Saul was prideful. He was stubborn. He refused to uh, repent. He then consults a medium. He goes and literally, he goes and consults a medium. Now Samuel, it says uh, in verse 3, now Samuel had died and all Israel lamented for him and buried him in Ramah in his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the spiritists out of the land. So one of the things God had asked him to do is to remove the mediums and spiritists. Because remember, you cannot have darkness and light in the same place. It is reason why God calls us an adulterous nation sometimes. It's like this. If you are married, your husband or your wife, uh, you're living with your husband and your wife, and then they bring another partner, right? What's your first thing? Who is this person? What are you doing? Um, and that's exactly what it is with God. Like God is in everything. He's, he's in the foundation. He's in the roof. He's in the walls. He's in the food I eat. He's in my drink. 
all of a sudden I bring in this new entity in this house, this new food. I'm no longer eating from his hand anymore. I'm bringing in this foreign food inside the house. The first thing God is going to say, what is this? If you still, if you and I are going to still be in unity, I want you to remove these things. And guys, for us to be united with Christ, we need to remove these things. We have to make a concerted effort. And if you have to repent for what your ancestors have done, that is also okay. Do that. Don't be afraid. You know, um, Lord, just say, Father, I, I stand in your courts of grace and mercy under the blood of Jesus. I bring the, the initiations and I bring, Father, all the callings that uh, the demons have given us and all the ancestral covenants that have come in our bloodlines. I break them. I bring every legal right. I nail it to the cross in the name of Jesus. And I ask, Lord, for your fire and your Holy Spirit to come upon us, the blood of Jesus to speak and to break these connections and to seal and close those doors in Jesus' name. Because that's what it is. When we are moving in Christ now, Satan gets mad, gets angry, right? And then what he does is he then calls, he recalls, and then he calls those things that are in the past. And then he says, okay, I'm going to call that forth. And it's a door. It's a door that's slightly open. He, he puts a foot in, right? And then becomes a stronghold. Now we've got to deal with that strong man. It is not by saying, okay, I'm going to be stubborn. Jesus didn't help me. Saul's so like, okay, God doesn't want to help me. He doesn't want to sort my stuff out. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back and consult a medium. This does not help you. So he went and consulted a medium. Saul, so just like you and me, we know that God exists, but we will go. We'll be Christians uh, crying out hallelujah, hallelujah. Come uh, when things are hard, we don't want to pray. We don't want to give up the evil that God has asked us to give up. Whether it be alcohol, whether it is, uh, it's an unholy life, and we've got different types of whatever it is, but an unholy life, you know, the Lord wants you to give it up and to take a whole, some holiness, holiness in you, to start changing, to show that Christ has come upon you. And we cannot do this by our own strength, guys. We do need the Spirit of the Lord. That's what I'm saying, to confess these things to God and then ask Him to fill you with this Holy Spirit as you confess it. Father, I, 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 I'm a wife beater. I get angry and I see my wife and I, I lose my mind and I go angry and I punch her in the face. You repent, you say, Lord, this is what I'm doing. And then you say, God, as the spirit of anger leaves me, please give me your Holy Spirit. Give me your spirit of fire. Give me your spirit of holiness. Lord, that when I see my wife and even when I'm angry, I'm able to have self-control because that is one of the fruits of uh, the Holy Spirit. These things, God has come to really give us beauty for ashes. He's come to bind the broken heart. Yes, you may be a white beater because you were beaten up as a child, but the Lord wants to change that now. You don't have to continue as such. So what we do is when we feel like, okay, I'm not willing to do this change, you then go consult to a medium. I'm going to go get this medium and they're going to bless me, whether uh, I'm going to insist that my ancestors bless me. So God wants to change this. Um, this thing of saying there's a calling, all callings come from Christ. Every, if you're called to be a prophet, you are called to be a healer, all those callings are coming from Christ. Give your gifts to God. If you notice that you're a seer and these things are trying to come initiate you, you're having green dreams of your grandmother, your grandfather telling you to go make a sacrifice in the waters or in the grave. Immediately know that is not from God. Guys, because it is written here in verse 20, go to God's instruction. That's the word of God. What does the word of God say about these things? He doesn't allow us to, uh, to, uh, to uh, what's called sacrifice to idols. He, this is not the way of God. So it says, go to God's instruction and testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, there will be no dawn for them. That means that if they're not speaking to the word of God, like you can test, that means you need to know the word of God. You need your Bible. You need, you, it's not just to sit in church and hear the pastor and go and get prayer and always say, I've received prophecy. Oh, these people are gifted. Amen. We're casting out a demon every Sunday. We're casting out a demon every Saturday, depending whether what church time you go to or whatever, um, prayer nights, all night prayers that you're having every Friday. 
every time casting out casting out casting out remember guys these things go to dry places right and if they come back and they see that you don't have jesus as a strong man in your house they bring several more stronger so you need to live a life of holiness you and i need to do this we need to surrender ourselves to god so in in ancestral callings in ancestral priesthood feelings all of these things that um we are talking about now um i want to bring it to the place of you and understanding first of all if you haven't taken anything here like if anything i've said please understand that ancestral worship is worshiping of disembodied spirits they are not your mom it's not your father it's not your grandmother it is none of those people. It's spirits coming from shul. It's spirits coming from under. That's why when they send you to worship, they will send you to graves to worship, right? If they make asking you for rumuti, it, it, it requires all types of things. And a lot of the times it will be fear. So if you've been initiated, if you, if you feel like you've had a calling to worship them, I'm asking you to repent and bring all covenants. Say, Lord, I may not know them. But God, for the fact that they're coming after me, there is something like this in my bloodline. I'm asking you, Father, to forgive me, forgive my family. I am nailing this on the cross and I'm asking for deliverance. Lord Jesus, come in that space and remove my name from the initiation books of Satan. Because Satan also has books of accusation. He does. So whatever covenants you and I make, he puts them on those um those books of accusation. He accuses us before God. Say, no, but this person was mine. They said this and they say that. But with the name of Jesus, when you choose Jesus, that's your trump card. You say, okay, Lord, he's saying, he's asking for my soul. He's coming to sift my, my house and my soul. He's saying that if I don't, because my grandmother had said yes to him, if they said yes to him, if now I can't, um, I don't want to, Lord, and he's coming after me. I'm speaking the blood of Jesus. Jesus has already paid this debt. The blood of Jesus has already ransomed me from, uh, from, from hell, grave, and death, literally. So I'm asking, Lord Jesus, that you come and you deal with these legal rights. That you stand and you be my savior. That these covenants be taken. The keys of Satan over my family be taken. In Jesus' name. Start fighting. Don't just let him take your stuff. Don't let him take your family. Don't let him come and corrupt your callings, your purposes, and your giftings. And your talents. If you're called to be an actor and a singer, and they sing, like, no, you must go to the waters now. And that is still demonic. He's leading that. That's not Jesus leading it. It's Satan leading it. So say, no, Father, you gave me this, this gift to sing, this gift to act. You gave me these giftings. He had nothing. He wasn't there when the Holy Spirit was knitting me in my mother's womb. He had no say in what Holy Spirit was giving me. You gave me these things. So if my family had sacrificed and they said, yes, we've made covenants, you cancel them in the name of Jesus. And you say, Lord, I'm asking that you cleanse me once again and you dedicate your giftings again. If now, guys, there will be consequences, especially if now he's, he, you came and you dedicate, especially if you're a singer, um, especially if you are in business, because a lot of people that have given their talents over to darkness, the first thing that's going to happen is he's going to take away everything he's given you. I'm telling you now, don't be afraid of that, because God has got a lot more for you than what Satan has ever given you. Let him take his darkness. It's better that the darkness leaves you and that the light fills you right because what we want is that now there will be no more death there will be no more fear there will be peace for you to be able to sleep at night right none of these things that you are worshiping from like 12 to 12 right 12 to 12 like there's no rest for you you're watching people sleeping you don't understand how they can sleep when they are just coming after you they're giving you hell they are threatening you they are cursing you. They sing curses like, oh, if you don't take this, somebody's going to lose a leg. If you don't do this, somebody's going to be an accident. Break those things. The power of Jesus can do this. The Lord says that even if you have a, a faith as small as a mustard seed, he will, you will move mountains. So that mountain of that fear of such and such, this is going to be an accident in your family. This is going to happen. Cancel that in Jesus' name. So I'm asking and I'm beseeching you, brothers and sisters, and I don't care what country you're in. If you've believed these things, 
and whatever name you've given them. Because, you know, as much as I'm speaking from this context, you know, I've lived in different countries. The Lord has taken me from different countries. And it's here that he's taught me about um, the powers of the air, how they really deceive us. And we are so the same. We are so alike. We are so alike. Asia as well appears in the book of the Lord. Right? He speaks about it. The idols that are on that side. He even tells Paul, not yet Asia. <laughs> but later on, um, some were sent to Asia to pray. So we are God's children. And Christianity, again, guys, is not a Western concept. We might put our own spin to Christianity. Like I said, you might put a, a, a Western concept. You might put an African. It, it doesn't mean oh, an Asian concept or South American concept. Whatever culture, it doesn't mean that's what Christianity is called to be. Christian is the way of life a lot. And, and, and the way of life of Christianity is surrender. You die to yourself daily. I die to the systems of belief daily. Things that I've believed on my own, even sometimes philosophers. And it doesn't mean whether it's philosophers from the, um, from the West that we only know. There's different types of philosophers. People, and these are teachers, people that brought different teachings in your life. And I, I still, if I, I, I took a concept and it spoke nicely to my itching ear, that has led to me hardening my heart to God's instruction and hearing God's voice in a certain area in my life, what generally happens is I have to lay that system down, lay that teaching, lay that root, lay that, um, that seed down and say, God, bring in your teaching, bring in the cross, the teaching of the cross, bring in Holy Spirit to guide me in the knowledge of God. Because it's written again in Hosea that we perish due to the lack of knowledge. And this lack of knowledge is the knowledge of God, our creator. Whatever ends of the earth you are in, you are created by God. You are not created by culture. Culture is the things that we do to make ourselves feel comfortable, to try to distinguish us uh, amongst other nations and other tribes. But it's, it's not from God. Do you understand? I, I'm hoping I'm clear, and uh, my heart is not to offend you. My heart is to set you free, that you don't have to be in that prison. You don't have to be in those shackles. In the name of Jesus. So if there's anything like that, again, guys, please, I ask that you, you, you pray and um, you pray with me. Let's pray together, actually. Let's bring that. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bring um, every covenant that is coming from generations upon generations my great-grandfather, all the way to the third and fourth generation, where I have made covenants with Shul, as written Father here. Guys, I'm giving a scripture, and it's, it's in Isaiah 28. I don't have any short number. Isaiah 28, and I'll tell you the scripture. It is... Oh, guys, I can't remember. Okay, it is in... Okay, it's from... It's scripture 15, verse, verse 15. So Isaiah 28, verse 15. The Lord says here that because you have said, we have made a covenant with death and with sure we're in agreement. When the overflowing scourge passes through, it will not come to us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under, and under falsehood we have hidden ourselves. Again, I repeat the scripture. And with sure we're in agreement. We have made um, a covenant with death. So, Father, where we, our families have made covenants with death, where we have made covenants with how, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are breaking, may the books of Satan be called forth, we place them in the feet of Jesus. May our names and the names of our families be removed. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself. I nail them to the cross. I ask, Lord, for deliverance right now. I command these principalities that are, are, are over my family to be bound right now. I'm asking, Lord, to send your host of heaven to come and bind them over my family. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, over my nation. In Jesus' name. And I receive your Holy Spirit. I ask for the blood of Jesus to wash me. Lord, teach me your ways. I ask God um, to have a holy life. That I may eat from your table, Jesus. That your word may be food to my stomach, my bowels and my bones. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, I pray. Amen. So we've ended up, guys, with, and I say principalities because we've ended up dealing now with principalities. Right? Because of, of, the, of, 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 of um, the covenants we have made. So as you see uh, in verse 15, because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with sure we're in agreement. Sure is a holding cell for, uh, uh, for principalities and demons. It holds them. But where Satan really re resides, it's in, the, it's in the air. And I know in Africa, you know this, because I know there's cultures that can call lightning, that have made such covenants that they can call lightning. And we used to think this was ridiculous. And, but I've actually seen it. You know, somebody can call lightning, speak to the power of the air uh, there in that region if you're trying to curse another a villager. Those things, the Lord, those covenants can be broken in the name of Jesus that no longer needs to be your burden, knowing um, and full your heart full of hate and curses and going smaller as if there's no reprieve for you. There is a reprieve. There is rest in Christ. And really, guys, he wants to call us um, from death. He wants to call us and wants to give us the life and a life abundance that is died for us in the cross. So if you don't believe in Jesus as I'm giving this, and if you don't haven't made him your Lord and Savior, Say, Lord, I'm asking, I confess that I am a sinner. I have done evil in your sight. I'm asking Jesus that you become my Lord and Savior. I confess it today that you have died and were risen again for three days. You, you died and you were risen on the third day. And that you are, have, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. That you are my Lord, you are my Savior. That you are the King of Kings. I ask you, Lord, and I receive, Lord, this deliverance in Jesus' name. Once you have confessed that he is your Lord and Savior and for him to come into your heart, I ask you, those that have not been baptized, you go get baptized. Please, prayer. Pray. It doesn't mean you've got to, like, I'm not forcing you into anything. I'm asking that you ask the Lord, uh, Father, I would like to get baptized in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why I speak of a baptism, and especially those that do our ancestral worship, we know that is a mark in the Spirit, right? Yeah. They mark in the Spirit as well, like the worship that we do of ancestral worship, they mark you with baptism as well. We need to break them baptism. We are baptized. It's a baptism of repentance. The baptism of repentance is when the old man dies and then you are raised up in Christ. Literally, is it's you dying and coming up again, just like the cross. Well, what happened with Jesus, who died on the cross and was raised up on the third day? So obviously for you, it's good. It's just a dunking, right? You are being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And you are being raised up. In that second, you also pray and ask the Holy Spirit because you don't have to wait for the baptism of tongues and all of that stuff much later. If you are believing, the Lord says, if you believe, if your heart believes, you can receive the tongues instantly in that time. Uh, you know, pray and receive, Lord, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and of fire. And Lord, and, and I ask that you give me uh, the sign of tongues. Now, if you've got demonic tongues, what you, you're going to struggle when um, I, there is a struggle once we are baptized in Christ. And when we start praying in tongue, we pray in the Holy Spirit tongue. Some people feel like, okay, like um, because I used to speak in a demonic tongue, have I lost my way? You haven't. Also confess that, that as demons had used you for demonic tongue, that you do not want to speak the language of death and how anymore that I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, that you give me just your language, your language of peace and blessing in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you guys.
and I will see you in the next video. Amen.